right? So this is the um, mass spectrometer. Particle comes in here, and as soon as it enters into the magnetic field, it starts to experience a force. Now we know that force is going to be in this direction as it curls around. As it comes up to here, that force is going to be this way and comes over here, force will be that way, causing it to move in a circle. So which way does the magnetic field go? Again, thumb points into the middle of that. Your velocity vector is up. Um, so the B field has to be inwards. And we draw that with X. Particle moves at a constant speed. Why does the speed not change while the particles in the field? The force is constant, and it's being experienced all the time, but usually a force will cause it to accelerate, speed up or slow down. Why doesn't this cause it to speed up or slow down? Yeah, but why doesn't a centripetal force cause a change in velocity? It is a great question, isn't it? It's not. Mm. So if you were going to push a cart, and this thing was moving at some velocity v, and you came and you pushed it from behind, and you applied a force on that cart in this direction, would that thing speed up? Yes, yes it would. Force is perpendicular to acceleration. You got it. The centripetal force, or which is the force of the B field, is perpendicular. the velocity. This is the same reason why when you throw something off of a cliff, the x velocity, the x, is constant. x velocity is constant even though there's a force because the force is being applied in the y direction. No force in the x direction, so there's no change in velocity in the x direction. While the thing is moving around here, the, the velocity vector, the velocity direction, is always perpendicular to that force. So it can never be changed by that force. The only way that a force can change a velocity is if they are in the same direction or if they are in opposite directions or some components is in the same direction. But if they're perpendicular to each other, then no, no change in velocity. And if there's no change in velocity, the work is also going to be zero. Because remember, work is change in energy, which is change in kinetic energy in this case, which would be no velocity. More on that another day, though. Calculate the centripetal acceleration. There's several different ways to calculate centripetal acceleration. The easiest one to try is the definition of a centripetal acceleration v squared over r. You can't do that because you don't know the radius. Plus, later on, you're asked for the radius, so probably out. The other way to do that is to solve for f. F in this case is caused by the magnetic field. So um, FC equals QVB. This is B, which contributes to F of B in the equation QVB. So in this case, the centripetal force is the magnetic force, which is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs times the velocity, 1.74 times 10 to the fifth meters per second times the strength of the B field, 0 0.09 tesla. That number comes out to be 
something. Uh, that number is five. Basically, 5.0 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons. Now, that's the centripetal force. We're asked to solve for the centripetal acceleration. Oops. Right. F equals ma. So, 5.0 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons equals the mass of this particular particle is 1.45 10 to the negative 25 kilograms. So centripetal acceleration is 3.45 times 10 to the, what was it, tenth meters per second squared. Now normally I would give you that in-between step this would normally be part C. I'm not sure why I separated them, or I put them together this time. So if you can do, you have to recognize is centripetal. It always is. There's not a case where force due to a magnetic field is not centripetal. It is always centripetal. It is always centripetal. Now with AC, you can calculate the square squared over R. 3.45 times 10 to the 10th centimeters per second squared equals the velocity 1.74 times 10 to the 5 centimeters per second quantity squared over R. Do be careful with the math and realize that R is in the denominator, so just take care on the algebra. And I'm going to try to give you realistic numbers on this. You're not going to get a radius of, I don't know, distance to the sun or anything like that. Although I suppose in the colliders, they have radiuses of miles, especially that super collider out in Switzerland. Now determine the distance x from which it leaves the field. So how far is it actually going to travel here? 2r. Yeah, right. This is the distance r, so that's the distance of 2r total. So 2 times 0 0.7 meters, which is And you could use this thing to, say, weed out any particles that you didn't want. Shoot all your particles in at this velocity, and if they are too heavy, they'll come up short. If they're too light, they'll go too far. And so the ones you want, the exact mass and the exact charge will go through those holes. Electron 